Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet. Tonight, I have with us a very special guest. I am honored to have Mr. Rudolf Schenker, founder and member still of the legendary Scorpions. Welcome to the show, Rudolf. Hey, I know how are you. Thank you very much for inviting me to the show. Now, you know, Rudolph, the Scorpion's been around for so long and they've been so successful. If you had to use one word to describe your career, what would it be? Amazing. <laughs> I mean, you have some 22 albums out and legions of fans throughout the world. It's just, um, it is, it's amazing. <laughs> Now, yeah, there we have it. Same word again. <laughs> amazing, it is. Now, do you remember the first time that you stepped out on stage at, you know, with the Scorpions? Of course. I mean, I remember it really like it was, uh, uh, yeah, yesterday, because uh, the whole um, career for me, it's like really so, um, I was living this life so intense. That I nearly, and that's what people sometimes are very amazed, mm -hmm. that I can tell them what was there and what was happening there and there and there, because I'm enjoying every minute, every uh, step, every day. It's for me outstanding because it's the best thing you can do after learning a job like an electrician mm -hmm. and going to the army because you have to go. I, I was lucky I didn't have to go. Uh, one uh, year and six months because they let me uh, go after uh, two months because they couldn't handle my, me because I was too much rock and roll. <laughs> In this case, I was very happy to uh, get around that situation. <laughs> but uh, living this normal life, going to work and all this shit, and then uh, um, having this music and living this life, creating something to enjoy people, and then building bridges between countries, between religion, between generation, going around the world and, and playing music is so amazing and so outstanding and so fantastic that uh, I always can say thank you, thank you, thank you for this great life and for this uh, great career, especially uh, to have a band which was built on was built on friendship, where really we not going on stage because we have to, we go on stage because we enjoying it, and uh, especially in the beginning days, uh, it was very important, especially because we drove in the uh, everybody five guys in the same car. Mostly, <laughs> I was on the steering wheel. Uh, and then uh, listening to music and then discussing, discussing, um, um, discussing, uh, discussing <laughs> uh, uh, things, uh, what we want to do on the next show and what we want to do with our career, which producer we want to take, and, and, and to talk as long, we found we were uh, really uh, had the same idea what we want to do. That means we were a team, and that was very important for us as a band. We wanted, wanted to be a gang, we wanted to be friends, and we wanted to have adventure and a good life. And you've had that. <laughs> exactly, and still have it. And it must be great to go out there, you know, your job, which really isn't a job, but when you deliver your product, it makes people happy. That has to be the greatest feeling in the that's world. A, that's a fantastic thing because I'm no, I remember when we um, announced the farewell tour, ah. there were so many people who said, oh, no, don't, don't do it, and then please stay. But, you know, the point is that uh, Scorpions, they always went on stage and giving 150% mm -hmm. and even more. And if we have the uh, situation that we may be don't stop this um, rock and roll machine not early enough and we come in a position that we have to go on stage because we have to, because contracts are written and we sure. have to go on stage and we can't deliver what the people are looking for. We feel bad and we feel that we're cheating people and mm -hmm. we, uh, we never want to come in this position. And one thing is clear, age 
it's maybe a number only for some people and for us still it is a number but it's um, you never know when the time is there and sometimes this situation that you can't really uh, uh, make the show like you want to do it comes very fast mm -hmm. and when you can't then say no we want to we want to uh, stop then you're in big trouble and <laughs> i know many bands where people went back home when they saw the band and say oh they were so bad i why they have to doing it and uh, i saw them two years ago and they were so great and now they're mm -hmm. oh i feel sorry about them we don't want to come in this position Right, right, which is best for the fans to everybody all around, really. Yes, exactly. I mean, it's important. I mean, we love to do what we do, and but you know, uh, for everything is a time, and you have to fee be very sensitive to uh, make the right. Uh, yeah, you cut. We don't. We when we when we do the farewell tour, it doesn't mean that we split the band. Mm -hmm. That means that this is the last big tour and this is the last studio album. We still will work uh, together, like maybe uh, we have so many uh, bonus material from the 80s, from the 90s, songs where we never, we, we never put on the album because we had already uh, enough uh, songs and mm -hmm. there were songs which we w would love to bring on the album, but there was no space on it. Right. So in this case, these songs are still there. And what we want to do, we want to give this also uh, defense. We want to give them uh, parts of the 80s and 90s mm -hmm. to um, give some stuff we have around in our library. We have around 900 hours mm -hmm. uh, uh, of live material, film material from in front of the, um, the pyramids, uh, Red Square, in the jungle, in uh, in uh, Amazonia, in uh, <laughs> and 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 so many things, and we, what we want to do also, we want to make some uh, great uh, um, DVDs for the fans mm -hmm. to uh, give them something to yeah still uh, listen or to um, watch it. That was the reason also that we did this. Uh, um, 3D project, mm -hmm. which was fantastic to do because <laughs> 3D, it's the perfect way, uh, if you can't see a band live, to see the band live at your uh, living room. Mm -hmm. it's perfect, it's fantastic, with 5.1 sound, it's amazing. So that's the reason I saw Avatar, and after I saw Avatar, I said, we have to make a 3D because <laughs> this medium is the perfect one for people who love live concerts. Right, and they could, like you said, they could experience it right there in their living room. Exactly. <laughs> now, you were talking about, you know, all these fantastic places that you've been. Is there any one place that really sticks out for you that was just like the most, here comes that word again, amazing for you to be at? Okay, we had different uh, things. You know, first of all, the musical part, it's mm -hmm. no question about that. It's the US Festival. It was uh, Rock in Rio in Brazil in mm -hmm. 85. It was the wall, Roger Waters, when he invited us, uh, the wall show at uh, Berlin Brandenburg Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, outstanding things in front of 500,000 people in Brandenburg Gate in Novaland, wow. or uh, the US Festival, or uh, Rock in Rio. Also, uh, is, uh, what of, on the other hand, we had things where, uh, like the invitation from Mr. Gorbachev wow. in the in the um, in the, in the um, Kremlin Kremlin mm -hmm. was outstanding because it's unbelievable after the history of Germany and Russia right. with all the wars and stuff mm -hmm. to have an, an, a Russian politician, a main man, he was still on power and power to invite us and, and have a great talk with him for 45, 50 minutes. Nice. Talking about everything and about rock and roll, talking about uh, Khrushchev when he took his boots and uh, was knocking on the, <laughs> on the table and uh, uh, we were scared. Uh, Gorbachev said, what? That was rock and roll. <laughs> wasn't, it, wasn't it? So, in this case, it, this was something very special to mm -hmm. go to through uh, Gate 13, where normally more uh, the high politicians, the number ones of the world, can go through if the police had to stop. 
who is through the corridors of the Kremlin and meet them. It was so unspe uh, unbelievable and so outstanding. No question about this. I think there are many, many uh, parts in our career which were outstanding. But right. uh, of course, because of the polit political situation and also that Gorbachev gave the Germans a, a, a big present like the unification, mm -hmm. it is something very special. And yeah, what can I say? It's outstanding and we enjoyed every second. That's great. Now, you also have an amazing book out with author uh, Lars Amend called Rock Your Life, where you take the simple concept of enjoying what you do as the key to happiness and success. But, you know, why do you think it's so hard for people to follow such a simple concept? Because they're living, they always want to live a different life. They don't like themselves. The problem is they don't like themselves, they don't believe in them. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that they're, they're looking in school for somebody who they can uh, uh, be maybe in their shadow to run with them because they are strong, they want to be like them, you know, and, 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 and. So in this case, they misunderstood their own life. Because their own life is to look in yourself and find you outstanding part what you really are. And this is the interesting thing. Would more people do that, we would have a much, much better life. Because the most problems in life coming from people who are not satisfied. Right. So in this case, if you live your own life, if you do what you want to do and what makes uh, uh, gives you um, fun and, and enjoyment, this is the way to go for, and not what the most people, and that's the problem for parents. They're going to the kids and saying, hey, you guys, you have to go to school, you have to learn a great job and make much money as possible. What that means in the end, the, 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 um, Focus is mostly on making money. Mm -hmm. And that's the most uh, worst thing you can do because you become the slave of money. The other way around is this way. You doing what you enjoy and then the money comes by itself. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Because when you do something you enjoy, you automatically do it. Mm -hmm. So that's the trick. Yeah. That's the only twist. And I, I uh, met so many people, and, and the last thing why I really started to do the book was because I was invited by the Stones in Denmark, the last European uh, uh, show on the last tour. And I came uh, 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 backstage, and uh, one guy came already running to me and said, Hey, Rolf, great to see <laughs> that you are here, fantastic. And I thank you very much again. You gave me the kick and... and uh, he said, what, 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 do you, what do you mean? Yeah, you remember in the, in the um, Rainbow, we talked about uh, uh, music and you talked about, we talked about this and I was saying, yeah, this, this, this. And he said to me, hey, uh, I think what's his name is Greg, or I don't know. <laughs> uh, don't talk too much, do it. Mm -hmm. And this was for me a sign. I'm immediately, next day, I went into a, a, a shop, bought a Teak machine this four-track uh, machine, mm -hmm. and start making music. And in the end, I was ending up as the head of the Rolling Stone <laughs> uh, um, uh, production. Mm -hmm. I'm the head of the Rolling Stones production. So because you gave me, I heard this often, because when I am uh, talk to other people, especially in the 80s, I was very, uh, also in the 70s, uh, uh, late 70s, 80s, very much into uh, meditation, yoga, which what I still meditation, I still do. And I was very, when I was talking to people and they're asking me things, I was very um, straight and no bullshit, saying things immediately. And people who really understood what I'm talking about, they actually changed immediately and start uh, uh, changing the, the life. So in this case, when I, I got this information from the guy from the Rolling Stones production, I said, okay, I have so many people who really uh, changed their life because of uh, uh, doing 
um, the right thing. Mm -hmm. Living for your life, enjoying life. That's why we are here on earth. So in this case, I said I doing I write this book. It's not a biography. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something which includes the biography a mm -hmm. little bit. But in the first uh, place is uh, for people who really don't know what to do with their life. And the only thing which really uh, makes uh, makes sense is do what you like to do. Enjoy. Don't have fear, go and do it. And not living a life for, uh, of other people, live your own life. And you will find out sooner or later that you as strong as other people are. Sometimes the wind is when you are growing up and you maybe have not the right uh, family, the right parents who gives you the right uh, um, uh, impulse then maybe you have to look for yourself and, and don't blame your parents that they couldn't tell you. You have to find out. And the situation, that's what's very important is. What we are, we can see ourselves also as a computer. Mm -hmm. Our mind is a computer. If you get wrong program by your parents, then it's really a difficult situation for you to really make the right decisions. That right. what you may have to do then, you have to make a reset. And the reset you can do by yourself in the moment you, uh, 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 you are realized you are not happy. You have to make a reset. And the reset help is meditation because meditation is a technique which gives you the chance to find out where, what you are, who you are. So, in this case, you making a reset, finding out who you are, and then you building your life. And you building your life not uh, what other people expecting from you. You building your life what you expect from you. And you will see that you have um, as much talent than other people have because you're doing what you want to do and not what people think you have to do and not what you think you have to do to make a lot of money, because money don't make you happy. Money is a very good thing <laughs> to maybe um, uh, have the kind of uh, double net or uh, uh, safety uh, belt, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make you happy. So in this case, it's very important that you are really enjoy what you're doing, and especially if in the first place it's not working out really like you think it has to be and you falling down on your knees, on your chest or whatever, stand up again. Because later on when you're successful then, you remember these faults so strongly and you see them as a very important part of your uh, evolution. So that's that's the reason why I wrote the book. And you know what, Rudolph? I think after you know you're done with the scorpions and writing books, you could probably be a motivational speaker. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's a, <laughs> but you know, but that's the point. I, 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 I give an example. In this case, both things going beside. And I tell you one thing: to make a rock and roll band out of Germany mm -hmm. at this time in the late sixties, seventies. It was, everybody said, you are stupid, completely <laughs> stupid. You can't do this. What you want to do when you are 30, 35, and what you want to do later. So all these people who told me that, they have no work anymore, but I still have work. So <laughs> that's the situation, how uh, life can change drastically by when you do what you want to do and what you enjoy to do. And what did your parents think when you uh, were like, Mom, Dad, I'm not doing this school thing. I'm going to be a rock and roll guy. The good thing about that <laughs> is my father had the same philosophy like I have. Now. Nice. <laughs> he was also somebody, when I start going and said, I want to play music, he said, okay, 
here if you want to have a because I wanted to have the uh, motorbike first mm -hmm. so, and he said no I don't buy you a motorbike because I don't want to, that you kill yourself right so in this case when I said uh, I want to make music he said okay I couldn't buy you a, a bike but I can buy, buy you now a guitar nice so in this case he was he said you know that he was the guy he said to me you know do what you want to do as long as you enjoy it, money mm -hmm. will come by itself. That was his uh, words he said to me. My mother was a little bit uh, scared because she was he came from a, a, a very basic, solid uh, family, mm -hmm. and she was used to have um, uh, grow up in a family who everything has uh, w w reason for. You know, like make uh, b uh, make your uh, learn your job and, and make money and stuff like this. In this case, I had a good possibility as a kid to uh, see the different ways of living and make my own op, uh, op, um, my own uh, way out of it. And the book really is greatly written and it's great to read and as I was reading the excerpts, I don't even have the book. I have to get the book, but I was just reading like every yeah, excerpt. I, I tell you one thing, we are uh, let's say next year when I have more time, uh, the, the uh, writer who wrote this with me together, uh, uh, Lars Armand, we will do an English version. Oh, that'll be then, great. And also uh, coming up with an update. Because I think people will love it. I read all the excerpts that I could possibly find online in English and that, um, you know, they sent me. And it reads so well that it's almost like you could see the movie playing in your head. And I love when you were talking about how, you know, you would listen to the radio and your mother and father would go dancing and it was radio time for you. And you would hear all these people in Germany. And it's just amazing because people don't know. They just think of, the, you know, the modern day where you're at now. Tell us a little bit. <laughs> about the story with <laughs> Axel Rose. <laughs> yeah, yeah the amazing guy. But you know, the point is, and I tell you one thing, this is how I was uh, describing that, mm -hmm. uh, they, we have still the same situation, mm -hmm. but in a different uh, format. <laughs> we, uh, there was no internet in the early days. Right. Now we have internet. You can, uh, you have to live your life like an adventure mm -hmm. because this makes your life interesting if you be too saved life gets boring and if you find maybe a job where you make enough money and you live you find the right wife and you make have kids some people making the decision too early and then they're finding out that they uh, uh, couldn't receive what they had is still deep, deep in themselves. In this case, I can always give advice. Mm -hmm. Live your life mm -hmm. like an adventure. Mm -hmm. Make as much you can do. Risk something, not risking your life, but right. risk. Maybe if you think you don't have your right uh, uh, people, the right team where you work with people and you don't like the people, but you like the money, fuck the money. Go and looking for other people, and then you will have even more money. Because with the right team, that was the basic uh, idea of the Scorpions. Making friendship, going out as friends. And if you have the right friendship, the right chemistry, chemistry is a very important point, mm -hmm. gives you out of uh, one and one uh, instead of uh, two, if three, is synergy. And that was what was life is all about. Making synergy, building the right people together, finding out what the right chemistry is. And I think that's important. And then when you have a life like an adventure, it's fantastic. And if you look back, you would think it's fantastic. Look, even now, last year in, the, um, uh, in January, uh, I went to the Rally Dakar again to Chile because I like the atmosphere of this very dangerous uh, <laughs> uh, uh, rally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a, a mind to make a little bit vacation after that <laughs> in Argentina, in Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. but, but my secretary, he called me and said, Rudolf, you still want to do this uh, uh, um, vacation there in, in Buenos Aires? I said, why? Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I have something else. <laughs> I have something 10 days later in um, in uh, India, in Sikkim, in the Himalaya, 
uh, a soccer uh, a game with some of the best soccer players and uh, for charity playing for the earthquake uh, um, people who uh, uh, lost their homes and stuff. I said, yeah, I would love to do that, but I mean, I can't play with all these great <laughs> soccer players. He said, yeah, you can, you can, you know, it's the, the, the love to play with you and stuff. I said, okay, I changed my plan. I go to India. <laughs> so I went to Goa first, had uh, three, four days for uh, uh, getting over the jet lag, I went then to, to Calcutta with a, with a uh, helicopter then uh, into 2,000 meters up oh there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and uh, meeting all the soccer players, then going one day later to on 4,000 meters up there and <laughs> uh, uh, very close uh, to the uh, Himalaya. Mm -hmm. And next day we played the soccer. Uh, it was fantastic. Then I played a little bit uh, music with uh, some of the Indian bands. Uh, two of the bands, one was from uh, Bollywood, the other one was the local one, uh, was putting the band together, played Rocker Like a Hurricane in a stadium. It was fantastic. It was adventure. Mm -hmm. I still love to do that because <laughs> uh, it's great to go around the world. Uh, uh, on Monday, we're leaving to Russia, playing in Russia again. In Moscow, we have already three sold-out shows. Nice. In the new hall in uh, 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 um, um, Coco City and playing in uh, St. Petersburg and all the other cities. You know, we played here in France uh, lately on tour again. So, and, and it's, this is very well organized, the mm -hmm. whole thing. Fantastic, mm -hmm. no question about this. Fan uh, great, because this is a gr big production which we have. But in between, to have this uh, outstanding kind of journeys, it's fantastic. And that makes life really livable. And what have the fans been like over the years? I mean, are they still just, I mean, of course, we all see the videos and they're just so enthusiastic. Is it just, I mean, why do you think, what is it about the Scorpions that people just never get sick of you? <laughs> now, you know what the point is? Now what we realize, especially not so much in the United States, but in, in Europe, Asia, and South America, we have a lot of young uh, fans there mm -hmm. because the radio format that is not so strict uh, or so uh, um, uh, um, yeah, strict like in America. You know, you have uh, different people living classic rock, people living to uh, listening to classic rock, and and then in in uh, uh, Europe and in Asia, in South America, they are also uh, they don't have this kind of uh, uh, great radios in, in the in countries, they're going into the internet mm -hmm. very much, mm -hmm. YouTube and so on. They're seeing the Scorpions playing there uh, live in, in Russia, in, in America, in, in or Europe, and they're uh, also uh, listening to the albums like Sting in the Tail. Sting in the Tail became very successful uh, worldwide. And, of course, the Scorpions came back with the classic rock but with a twist, and the twist is actually uh, the right was right twist with the right subtle is uh, different that the the old fans like it, and new fans who maybe got told by the parents the scorpions they're still there they're listening to the stuff, and now we have uh, uh, very many uh, young fans, mm -hmm. and we have around I think now one point three million. Um, Facebook uh, users, mm -hmm. Scorpions fans. Mm -hmm. So, and you believe it or not, eighty percent of them are between fourteen and twenty-eight years. <laughs> so that means our music is very much timeless and really built. Uh, as I said before, uh, is building bridges between generations, religion, and countries, continents, and and and. And it's true, because even preparing for this, I was playing, you know, Rocky Like a Hurricane, and my 16-year-old daughter knows all the songs, too, you know? So it's true. It's, yeah, it's uh, coming also in the film. Uh, the, the film uh, people who are uh, producing films, they're coming up more and more and using Rocky Like a Hurricane because it's somehow it's an anthem of the 80s because I met <laughs> Carlos uh, two years ago, uh, uh, because he played here in my hometown, was by accident I was uh, <laughs> here 
uh, at home because we had a break for a few days. Mm -hmm. And I went to Carlos' uh, concert and then he invited me to his dressing room and said, Rudolf, unbelievable. You rock you like a hurricane. It's like an anthem now. Unbelievable. <laughs> so it's right. It's an anthem for the 80s. And uh, it's, it's also timeless because there's a great lyrics. It's a great song. And, you know, it's our highlight. I always say the Scorpions are standing on uh, three soils. It's um, peace, love, and rock and roll. Uh, peace stands for... Um, uh, um, Wind of Change uh, stands for peace. Mm -hmm. Still Love You uh, stands for love. And uh, Rock It Like a Hurricane stands for uh, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. That's better than sex, drugs, and rock and roll as far as my kids are. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Uh, that's right. It's similar, but only the drugs are uh, out, uh, outside. <laughs> Because you can uh, connect love with, with sex. <laughs> this is friend. true. I mean, we have nothing against sex. Sex is a very natural <laughs> and good thing to do. Now, Rudolf, you're very inspirational to a lot of people, too. Tell us real quick about the story uh, with Axl Rose. I mean, I read that in the book, and I've already repeated it to a million people because I thought it was so cool. Yeah, because it was interesting then because we were invited to this um, special concert, a tribute of... Uh, uh, Fredo Mercury, mm -hmm. because um, it was in the uh, Wembley Stadium with uh, the uh, three other Queen guys, and uh, Robert Plant was there, uh, Axel, and, and uh, many, many, many. You, maybe you remember this uh, concert, was it in the 90s? I do, yep. So, and we were invited the two, Klaus and me, and so, and we were backstage, and, and Axel, he was singing a few songs with uh, Brian and with uh, Roger and um, so and then uh, we uh, he uh, crossed us and hey, come to the dressing room guys so and then we were in his dressing room and he said you know guys I have to tell you a story why I'm doing all this it's because I was going by my with my car in the Melrose down the Melrose and had to stop on the traffic light and um, by um, standing there listening to one of your songs, I realized that uh, next to me there were five, six cars standing, and out of all of them came Scorpion songs, <laughs> different kind of. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I want to do the same thing. So in this case, that was his story he wanted to tell us, and I, I think it's amazing thing because I mean uh, Guns N' Roses are still for me one of the rock and roll uh, gods uh, mm -hmm. of rock and roll music. No question about this beside of ACDC, Black Sabbath, Guns N' Roses and whatever we uh, uh, we have. But uh, Guns N' Roses uh, as you can see also in the Billboard charts now they're still again in the top 10 with their greatest hits. Mm -hmm. That says something that they did something right. They're too bad because I'm, uh, I think five years ago I met uh, um, Slash. Mm -hmm. I said, Slash, you have to come back again with Axel mm -hmm. and uh, make Guns N' Roses again. He said, You know, Rudolf, tell Axel if he says yes, I'm there. Mm -hmm. So the problem is really if chemistry is not working, you right. can't do anything. And that's what I said in the before. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is everything. You can't force this. Right. It's a natural thing. If somehow the, the, the inspiration is out of it, it's gone. So right. then you, then it's, it's, then it's history. Yeah, it's something you can't force. So this is another, you know, like I, when I was reading in your book, like you were saying, you have to really be in tune with your surroundings and what's going on in the moment. Not to let some of this stuff slip by, you know? Yes, right. But, but when you say that, I have to also mention the 90s, mm -hmm. where a, a different time was there. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be in time with this time. Right. Because as a biorhythm, you know, mm -hmm. it's coming and going. It's like breathing in, breathing out. You can't always breathe in. You have to breathe out. And the 90s was for us very much, uh, the, especially the, the uh, um, end of the 90s, beginning of 2000, it was uh, more 
uh, time is against you. That's like the Chinese people saying, if time is against you, go da sleeping and wake up when time is again for you, mm -hmm. and then you have enough power to use the time for you. And I think that's an important point. You can't always be number one. Mm -hmm. You have to give sometimes uh, the number one to other people. And that's good because it's like uh, the, the, the garden. You can't always, you can't always get uh, fruit out of your garden. You have to give the garden a little bit time also to rest. So and this is the same with bands, the same with artists, same with whatever. So in this case, We had our time also where we uh, were very close to say, okay, uh, let's break up the scorpions or maybe make our solo stuff. But, you know, somehow we were so much connected that we said, okay, let's find a way. What mm -hmm. can we do to use this time in a different way? And that's the reason why we did this project like the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra Moment of Glory. Yeah, that was Acoustica, amazing. Because we said, let's see what we can do with the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. Mm -hmm. Because unbelievable, one of the best orchestras coming to us in 94, right. um, 95, and asking us to work with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's unbelievable for a band who has uh, self-deduct uh, uh, and uh, working with this outstanding kind of uh, musicians. So in this case, we did it. We found the right conductor and arranger. And we did a great album that oh. gave us another um, view into our way of composing. And we noticed where our strengths are. And that was the reason that we came back then with Unbreakable, that means Humanity Hour One, and now we're sticking in the tail. Uh, and I think that's the, the result of really learning out of uh, the uh, 90s where the wind was blowing in our face. Oh, the moment of glory was another great thing. I mean, with all the strings and the orchestra and the kids, and it was an amazing production that worked. You know, very, there's so much that could go wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I tell you one thing, it was very good for us, too, to really uh, learn something, because I never was a big uh, uh, classic fan. Right. You know, I was more, I was the rock and roll guy, mm -hmm. you know, and then... <laughs> Working with this kind of musicians, and especially by listening to our uh, stuff, uh, listening to how our songs coming out with the orchestra, it gave a third dimension in it. It became bigger. It was like really a, an outstanding experience to listen to um, the songs in the classical um, dress. Now, another thing that I was reading about in the book, too, you were mentioning about sometimes it's best to go with your gut instincts. Is that what you do? Yeah, of course. I tell you one <laughs> thing. The problem is only uh, when you are playing in the band. You know, in the <laughs> beginning, it, I could do this very strongly because there was no success. Mm -hmm. There was uh, uh, only fun. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so uh, all the crazy ideas very many many of them I had, they uh, worked out in a way, but then they worked out, they became bigger than everybody thought. <laughs> so if you becoming a big band then, and you're coming uh, again with some crazy ideas, people in the band, the chemistry, are afraid right. that when you're coming with crazy ideas, you're <laughs> destroying your whole uh, uh, concept. Right. So in this case, if you becoming... A band with a, 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 a style, with an, a, a way of how people expecting this band, it's mm -hmm. very difficult to mm -hmm. change them. That's the situation which uh, it's maybe the bad side of, uh, of success, right. is that you have to be in this cage. If you're not, people uh, don't like you anymore mm -hmm. because they have this picture of you. And that's, uh, I understand very much, because as a musician, as, a, as an uh, 
uh, artist. You want to go further, further, but the people don't want, doesn't mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. They want you in the same dress, in the same uh, place, and then and, and. So that's the situation. Um, and um, so that's, that's the reason why I'm doing all these things like the Rally Dakar or some other things outside of the Scorpions to uh, fulfill, fulfill my life with some um, pepper and salt, mm -hmm. which maybe got lost a little bit by being too uh, perfect and too professional. Mm -hmm. Now, the industry has changed a lot, too, since you started out. I mean, is that a good thing or a bad thing as far as, like, the music industry? Oh, there is no good, is no bad. <laughs> Behind every good um, um, uh, news are bad news. Mm -hmm. Behind... Uh, 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 bad news are good news. The point is that you don't see them immediately because you are uh, a little bit too much uh, focused in what you see in the moment. I think that what we have, as I said before, that everything we have now with the computer, with the internet and everything, it's all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't turn the wheel back it's all right. It's a question how creative you are, how to use this. So in this case, if you, Lana Del Rey, and you um, uh, 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 do your, you, you editing your uh, videos by yourself and put them into the Internet, and uh, uh, next day you have 10 million of people mm -hmm. who are watching your video, that means you can be famous in one, in one night, yeah. if you have the right idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, you have to change your, your, your strategy. Mm -hmm. So, the strategy in, in the place when we started was play as much life as you can do, try to play everywhere uh, where you have electricity. So, what, that's what we did. So, and try to get an album uh, and, and contract and everything. So, but now it's a different game. Right. So, and you have to find the uh, uh, game um, 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 rules and, and, and try to be creative. So, mm -hmm. in this case, it's not getting better, it's not getting worse, it's, going, it's getting different. Right. Right. Now, you seem to have found that secret to happiness. If you could, would you change anything in your life? No, because I'm here, because I'm, you know, the point is, I'm learning out of mistakes. Mm -hmm. Mistakes are a part of life. And most people, they don't, they don't move because they are afraid to do mistakes. If you don't move, mm -hmm. there's no uh, revolution, uh, evolution. So in this case, make mistakes, make mistakes, as many mistakes you do, as wider you will get. So in this case, that's the only way. Don't uh, have fear. Go further. So in this case, my mistakes I did. Uh, uh, I tried to uh, um, uh, learn out of, out of them, and, and that's the reason why I'm here now. So don't. Uh, if you fall, stand up again. Fall, stand up. Fall, stand up. So, and somehow you, you're reaching a point when you uh, look up again and say, oh, I'm here. I can't believe <laughs> that I made it all over the years to this, this far. So that's when you listen to people who uh, became very successful. That was the way how they uh, went. By any chance, they became a chance they became successful because by all this learning and doing, they are found out. And the point is, the, the mistake of many people are that they want to be hip. And if you want to be hip today, you're not hip tomorrow. Right. So if you go by instinct, you may be not hip today, but you're hip tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because you're doing something which you feel you have to do, and because you, are, you have the power to do it, the next time people go and say, how you know that? It's unbelievable you did the right <laughs> things in the right moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. because you were uh, strong enough to listen to your inside and doing it. Right. So, you know, you know Rudolph, still jogging along there with the, the Scorpions. What's coming up for the Scorpions? Now, you said you're, getting, you're preparing to go to uh, Moscow. What else you guys got coming up this year? Uh, 
St. Petersburg, uh, uh, some other cities in in the middle of uh, uh, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, some of the Asian parts, some in the uh, in the European parts of Russia. From there we go to. Uh, ach so, we we, we just do some uh, concerts and festivals in. Uh, Europe, then we go to, uh, we come to the United States. Nice. We are very looking very much forward to come to the United States again after having last year uh, uh, did a break because we did some other uh, mm -hmm. countries and stuff. But we're looking for very much forward to go to uh, Canada and the United States and the Middle America and South America. Yeah, we're doing another run around the nice. world, and then um, I think the end of this year or beginning of next year, the tour will be finished, and then we do our uh, kind of things to maybe, um, uh, as I said to you, um, doing the uh, uh, DVDs and mm -hmm. bonus tracks uh, thing and stuff like this. Maybe here and there one concert, but mm -hmm. not... Uh, in a way, like this tour. This was the last really big world tour. Oh, good. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you here in the America. And, you know, you have so many fans that have been loyal throughout the years. Radio stations, both online and on satellite, as well as FM still playing your music. What would you like to say to all your fans before we leave? Thank you, thank you very much <laughs> for really supporting the Scorpions for so many years, giving us, as a German band, the chance to really play in the homeland of rock and roll, United States. We are very happy, Canada, fantastic South America. We are very, very happy to that we can live this life, that you make it happen, you guys, your fans, you making it happen. And what can I say? We're still rocking like a hurricane, <laughs> and that we will do when we're coming back to the United States. Great. Again, Rudolph, it's been a great honor interviewing you today, and thank you for taking the time to do this with us here, and just stay on the line for a few seconds. I'll get a quick ID from you. Okay.